Well, this is a big day, big change. I'm sure you recognize where I am, but it feels like a new day today. I've gone and changed my camera system. Yes, I've gone and changed from a Canon 5D Mark IV, my three L-series lens, and I've gone mirrorless. Whoa, there you go, I've said it. I'm out, I'm out of the closet. <laughs> yes, I have gone mirrorless. It's been something I've been thinking about for quite some time. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with a 5D Mark IV at all. In fact, it's a fantastic camera and I have loved using it over the years. I've had it for about three and a half, four years now. However, technology moves on, things change. Um, but there was one reason that I decided to move, particularly, or the, I guess you call it the catalyst for the move, which I'll touch on in a bit, but yeah, I've changed. So today's the first day out with the new camera and uh, I really don't know how I'm gonna get on, but we're gonna have a play. So I can't promise superb images today, but uh, we'll give it a go. We'll find a way around the buttons of the new camera and see what we can come up with. It's a lovely morning here again at home. Um, we had a really nice sunrise about 20 minutes ago, cast some nice light for 10, 15 minutes. It's overcast now, um, but I'm gonna just venture in, get the camera out. Good morning to you too. Get the camera out and have a play. And I'll fill you in in a bit, in a bit more detail. So I guess you're wondering what I've changed to. Well, I've changed to Sony. Sony A7R 3 Now, let me tell you why. As I said earlier, I fancied moving to mirrorless, but it wasn't a big priority for me. Do you mind? As I said earlier, I, I did want to move to mirrorless, but it wasn't just the fact of moving to uh, a mirrorless camera system that you know, made me switch this time. It was actually the lens choice. Now, I think I said on the last video, and it's a little bit tongue in cheek around the fact that I would, I was really keen on getting a 100 to 400. If you watch my vlogs, you'll see that I spend a lot of time with a telephoto lens, particularly here in, in the woods. Uh, and I really enjoy that telephoto lens. In fact, what I did was I did some analysis using Lightroom's uh, metadata. Now, I don't know whether anybody's tried this before, but if you go into the library function in Lightroom, click on the metadata and you can filter all of your images based on the lens that you took it with. So I did that because I was interested to see what, uh, where my, most of my shots were being taken. Now, given at the moment, um, or up until today, I've had the 16 to 35, I've had the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. And it was a bit of a balance actually between all of them. There wasn't a clear winner, but there was a, a definite leaning towards the telephoto. Um, and that's probably been more recently than not. So I wanted to move to that slightly longer reach in the telephoto. I was feeling that I was pushing at 200 all the time and trying to get a little bit more of that detail, just, just get a bit more reach really. So I had my eye on a 100 to 400. Now, if I'd have stuck with the 5D Mark IV and purchased the 100 to 400 for that, which is a cracking lens. That paired up with the 5D Mark IV is a heavy beast, to be fair. Carrying that lens and that body around with my other two other lenses, um, or I might, have, I might have even been three, because I guess I wouldn't have got rid of the 70 to 200. Um, that would have been heavy. So it wasn't really that 
that, that wasn't really an option for me. So I thought, well, okay, what other options I've got? So we've got the Canon system that's just been released, the R5 and R6. The R5 looks a fantastic camera, but to be fair, out of my price range, you know, the price tag they've got on that is ridiculous. Um, but then again, you get what you pay for, I guess. It's a fantastic camera, but too big. And the file sizes are gonna be too big for me. So R5 was out of the window. Now R6 was a definite, uh, consideration now if you watch the podcast then and you watch previous vlogs you'll have seen that James Burns recently got an R6 and he loves that and he's producing some absolutely phenomenal images out of that R6 so that was a was an option for me that I seriously considered uh, then they brought out the 100 to 500 RF lens uh, the new one to fit that uh, camera but again, price-wise, looking at that particular lens that clearly isn't going to be discounted because it's a brand new lens and the body that's got no discount available to it because it's a brand new body, those paired up together is quite an investment. And then I would need to then get another lens, at least one more to go with it. So I've ended up going with Sony um, and I've ended up getting the 100 to 400, which I really, really wanted. So this is the G Master 100 to 400. And the other lens I've ended up getting is the 24 to 70 f 2.8, but I've gone for the Sigma version. Now I was looking and, and searching through the reviews against that and the Sony G Master uh, alternative, and to be fair, the Sigma really stuck up, uh, uh, stacked up against it in terms of you know the quality of the lens, the image quality, and for the price, it's nearly half the price of the Sony version. So I've gone with that. Now, why did I go 2.8? That's a good question because obviously I've been shooting f4 before across all my lenses. Well, the reason I did that again was just to, I guess, open a little bit more to me to explore in terms of creativity because again, I'm spending a lot more time on the woodland and that doesn't mean that I'm gonna be exclusively shooting woodland because I won't. Um, but when I am within the woodlands, that, that sort of 2.8 gives me a little bit more creativity, a bit more abstract. That lens can focus really close as well. So it could become, you know, some abstract stuff and some macro stuff. You know, even today, the, the fungi's out and I'm sure I could get some really nice close up, semi sort of macro shots of the fungi with that. Uh, with that lens and with that aperture. So it just opens up a bit more for me. Um, and it's a super sharp lens, so I understand. We'll wait and see. So yes, that's it. Um, that was the reason I did it. Um, those three have replaced, uh, sorry, those, yeah, my camera and these two lenses have replaced those three lenses. Uh, so this will be my setup moving forward. And I'm really excited about it, as you will expect, new toys and everything. But yeah, I'm just, I'm going to struggle to get used to the change, obviously, but um, both, obviously, you know, Gary and Darren, who you know and have seen on previous vlogs, have got the same camera body, so at least I'll have uh, a phone a friend available if I ever get stuck or if I ever um, really get confused with some of the settings, and I'm sure they're going to get plenty of calls from me, so. But yeah, that's it. I'm now a Sony fanboy. <laughs> Better get taking some pictures with it then, I guess. Well, one thing I like straight away about this new system is the focus peaking. And I've not had that before in the Canon DSLR. Um, and it really helps when you're trying to look at what's actually in focus on your, within your scene, especially with lots of tree trunks. So I've set the focus peak into red so it uh, overlays on here and in manual focus. And when you can zoom in, obviously in live views, you can on normal DSLRs and, and check your focus, but this just gives that extra degree of, um, I guess, comfort that all of the areas that you want to be in focus are in focus, and then you can adjust it and get exactly what you want to do. So yeah, that's really cool. I like that. The other thing I've noticed, oh, um, sorry, before I say something else, in, in the same vein on that particular shot I've just uh, framed up there, there is um, some highlights in the sky because I've got some lights coming through. I'll probably end up cropping this shot, but again, you'll see within the viewfinder, it's got the zebras, the Sony, I think, I don't know whether they're just specific to Sony, but I think they're called the zebras. And then that just gives you the highlight alert as well, if you've got any areas blown out. So sort of combination of that red focus peaking and the, the zebras looks okay. Um, we'll see how we get on with it. I might get fed up with it, but it's a, it's a toy to play with at the beginning. Um, yeah, the other thing I've noticed straight away actually is because the file sizes are bigger in here, I'm used to with the, the Canon 5D, I think it's a 20, 
8 megapixel sensor, megapixel sensor. Uh, this is a 42, I think I might be wrong. Um, and obviously the file sizes are bigger when, you, uh, when you're taking them. So I've noticed the write speed, and it could well be that I've, I've got a slow memory card in there because it seems to be writing them you know, within a few seconds and you, it shows you at the back of the camera that it's right in it. So, and then also when I'm zooming between, uh, sort of zooming in and out, is there's a little bit of a lag there, which I'm assuming is to do with the fact that it's, um, it's just a, diff a, higher a higher resolution file that I'm previewing within the camera. So I've got to get used to that. And of course, then that's going to give me larger file sizes in the editing suite as well. So lots to get used to with this, no doubt. But this shot here, uh, it's definitely not an award winner. We've got no light. It's gone really flat now, actually. But uh, I just wanted to take advantage of the, the brown bracken that's now turned as we're heading into autumn. And it heads, it just creates a nice carpet underneath these birches here. There's a few uniform birches, set of three, which normally works in, in groups. Um, there's a, a small bush in the background, which unfortunately is still green. I'd love that to have been yellow. That would have been really nice. So yeah, it's not, as I say, it's not a great shot, but today for me is more about playing with this camera and testing it out and seeing how I'll get on. So, but I'll, uh, I'll show you it anyway. Um, it's now starting to rain. They are waterproof, aren't they? Yeah. Now I said earlier about the lens can get close up and fungi is a good opportunity to do it. This time of year is absolutely perfect. This is fungi season. Um, the the fen is absolutely full of it. It's a peat bog, so there's a lot of different fungi and mushrooms that are out this time of year in the, in the fen here. And I wasn't actually intending to take shots of mushrooms or fungi or toadstools or whatever they are today, but I just walked into the woods here just to take a bit of cover because it started to rain. Didn't want to get my new toy wet. Um, and I spotted this little fungi tree. <laughs> for want of a better word, it's, it's a, I was just about to say it's gorgeous. Is that a bit of an overkill? It, it looks good, shall we say, from, a, for, um, from an image perspective. It looks like a tree, actually, so maybe that's why it drew me to it, because it's sort of shaped with branches coming up and then it's fungi at the top, so it could be a tree within a woodland, a fungi tree. I'm really going on now, aren't I? Anyway, I decided to have a go, so I've put the, the, the I'm at, what am I at? I'm at 50 mil, oh, here comes the rain again. I'm at 50 mil, I'm at f2.8, and I've, I've focused in on the, um, the fungi now. Clearly at 2.8, I'm gonna be blowing out the background completely, so there's a nice bit of um, blur in the background, so it is just focused on this, uh, this mushroom. There is a few leaves at the bottom, which I did not place. They were there, naturally fell from the birches. Um, so what I've done is I've focus stacked this, which I think is the thing to do with this type of a shot. So I've, I've taken several focus points on the mushroom itself and one on the leaf at the front. And I'll probably then have to stack them together. But again, I've got no idea how this will come out because uh, this isn't an area that I do a lot of work in. But as I said earlier, the new lens gives me that opportunity to take shots like this. So yeah, quite excited to have a go at editing this one and see what it looks like. Oh, forgot to say, I always carry an LED light around with me. Um, there we go. And I actually use this just to light up the uh, stems of the mushrooms. I think that's the sort of thing that macro photographers do. <laughs> so yeah, had one, I thought I might as well use it. Just to give, just to, I guess, put some light on those stems so it's not too dark underneath that mushroom head. Well, I thought I'd try the beast out. I'm gonna have so much fun with this lens. I've taken my first shot on my 100 to 400. It's not a bad shot, it's just not got the light, but... Oh. Yeah. Oh, 
the thing I've got to get used to, and lots of things to get used to, um, obviously I've got a tripod collar on this lens for the first time. Didn't need one on the 70 200 I do like it actually because it's, uh, you can obviously loosen it and turn it from landscape to um, portrait quite easily, which is nice. Uh, I've had to put an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom of the, uh, the L bracket tripod collar thing, um, just to go onto the top of the, the tripod. Um, uh, Darren's told me that he's got an L bracket that fits it, which will then go straight in, so I don't necessarily need that, but that's fine, that'll do for now. Um, lots of things to look into in terms of what I need extra now. But anyway, taking this shot, um, it's a shot that uh, I've walked past a few times, it's on the main track, um, and there is a little bush that is, is uh, it's got, or the, sorry, it's got the yellow leaves on that are coming through. Uh, it's, a, it's a small birch, and then on the left-hand side there's four other birches that are framing on the left-hand side of the scene with the little yellow leaved birch in the middle just leading to the right and again you've got some um, bracken that have, that's turned to the brown colour here at autumn. As I said there's just no light on it unfortunately so it's not going to really show it off to the best of its potential but as a composition I think it works and it's a test for the first shot just uh, sorry a test for the first shot on this lens just to see how it comes out so Well, so far, so good. Um, taking a few shots with the camera, I need to take them back into Lightroom and see what the files look like to edit. But yeah, no, so far, I think I'm going to enjoy this. So that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, yeah, I shall no doubt be back plenty of times with the new camera, exploring it. Certainly that 100 to 400, taking advantage of that extra length that I've got. Who are misses? Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this and I shall see you on the next one. See you soon.